So what is going on guys, I'm Blackhawks Amazing, welcome back to another video on the channel where it looks like we have our last bits of information about Modern Warfare 3 Zombies before it releases this weekend on the 10th. Troik have gone ahead and dropped a bunch of brand new information about the game telling us everything that we need to know before we play, what the perks are, ammo mods, loadouts, field upgrades and much more. As always, if you want to check this article out for yourself that they've written, I will leave the link to it down in the description, but let's go ahead and take a look at it. So we know the whole mission in MW3, the name of the operation as to why we're going here in the first place to Las Almas to fight the undead is called Operation Deadbolt. And the main tasks of our characters who we're playing as is to survive off against hordes of the undead, but also survive against the PMC group, which we know as Terminus Outcomes. We'll need to go into this open world, search for valuable acquisitions and schematics, complete different contracts as we go, which will earn us essence, collect acquisitions, learn of the story of what's gone on, why Terminus Outcomes were here in the first place, and finally extract from the world before we're killed. That's the main overview of MW3 Zombies, but Troyok tell us some of these smaller things that we don't know, starting with our strike team operators. You can recruit and play as any unlocked operator for your strike team, and each recruited operator will have their own on soldier gear. And every operator that you've unlocked from both Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare 3, you can play as in Zombies, it's not just MW3 operators. So each operator that you choose comes with five different customizable equipment slots, and any gear that you find during your time playing Zombies is going to be saved here, which includes killstreaks, armor, gas masks, and medical items. Rucksacks is also a thing, so you can fill your rucksack with essential acquisitions that you find on the battlefield or craft via valuable schematics. Troik tell us that on the small rucksack, there are initially up to five open slots, so I'm assuming you can get bigger ones, and after your mission, providing that you found either acquisitions or schematics, you can add such items to the rucksack. Starting to sound very much like a battle royale mode, which I guess is kind of what it is, although it's more DMZ than Warzone. It's got a lot of that feeling of being essentially Warzone but with zombies and DMZ mixed in there. Talking about loadouts then, to take into the battlefield you can choose two primaries or a primary and a secondary weapon, along with a lethal, tactical and field upgrade. As for primary and secondary weapons, as we know all MW2 and MW3 weapons are available in zombies, you might be wondering what is insured weapon slots? Well these are weapons that you've leveled up and added attachments to. Basically not OP weapons but more powerful ones I would say, but they tell us if you fail to exfil with an insured weapon, because as we know you can exfil with different items and weapons in zombies, and then load back into another game with them so at the start you're more OP instead of being weak and then getting stronger as you progress. But if you do end up using an insured weapon, and you fail to exfil with it, it only becomes available again after a cooldown period. You have up to three insured slots, and two of them are unlocked after completing Zombies missions. They also talk about contraband stashes. These are weapons that you find in game and you exfil with, but if you leave them behind during a mission, then they're going to be permanently lost. You can keep a stash of up to 20 of these contraband weapons, which may or may not have attachments added to them, but they're going to be helpful. And then finally, they talk about tactical and lethal equipment, which are the exact same things that we're going to see in multiplayer, such as the stun grenades, smokes, shock sticks, stims, frags, stickies, C4, etc. There's nothing unique there, but what is unique to zombies are the field upgrades. There are six field upgrades in MW3 zombies, five of which are unlocked as you progress through your military player ranks. So let's go ahead and take a look at what these are and do. We have the energy mine, which we're used to. This one spawns an explosive, dealing massive damage to enemies who set it off. We've seen that one in Cold War. There is the Frenzied Guard Field Upgrade, which repairs armor to full and forces all enemies in the area to target you for 10 seconds. And any enemy that you kill during this time repairs your armor. That's useful if you're playing with teammates. So is this one, Healing Aura, which heals all players immediately and in last stand. Frost Blast, which will damage enemies with its initial blast and then slow any that remain that enter the area of effect. And the final two are Aether Shroud, probably one of my favorites, or at least it was in the beginning of Cold War. It allows you to become invisible to zombies. And Tesla Storm, which lasts for 10 seconds, and during that time, lightning connects to other players, which stuns and damages normal enemies that are within range. So those are the field upgrades. This is actually the first time of me reading them, and I was expecting at least one new one, but as far as I can remember, these are all old ones that we saw in Cold War. The only difference is the redesign of them. But other than that, if you've played Cold War Zombies, they're the exact same, which is kind of disappointing. One new one would have been nice. Moving on though, talking about acquisitions and schematics. Once you return from your first successful mission, you'll be able to place acquisitions into your rucksack for use during subsequent outings. And you can also start to craft your own acquisitions at the schematics crafting location, which you will find in the lobby, between drops. Acquisitions are single-use items that can give you an advantage on the battlefield. Any acquisition that you find in Exfil with in your rucksack can be added to your acquisition stash. 
and schematics are highly sought after plans that permanently allow you to craft acquisitions that you add to your rucksack, but schematics have cooldown periods after which they can be brought into the exclusion zone. So basically, if you're confused, acquisitions are single-use items that you'll find whilst playing the game, and schematics are plans that you will find whilst playing the game that will allow you to craft acquisitions. So instead of finding acquisitions, if you find schematics, then you can craft them instead. So looking closer at some of these acquisitions, we have different rarities of Ethereum that you can find in-game, along with different rarities of Ethereum tools. So you can find rare, epic and legendary Ethereum in two different forms. These are going to be used just like in Cold War Zombies if I remember correctly to upgrade your Pack-a-Punch weapons to level 1 and level 2 alongside uncommon, rare, epic and legendary ether tools which will let you upgrade any weapon that you're currently holding in your hand to a rarer form. And the rarer the form, the more impressive damage the weapon inflicts. Again, slightly similar to Cold War, although in that game you picked up junk off the floor that zombies dropped and then upgraded your weapon at the upgrade station where you brought armor. But this time to upgrade your weapon's rarity, you have to find these ether tools around the map instead of being dropped from the zombies, from what I can tell anyway. Moving on to our perks then, which is a standard in zombies. If you've played this game mode before, you'll know what all of these are. There's nothing new here, but just going through them in case. There is Deadshot Daiquiri, which allows you to aim down sight and then move to an enemy's critical location, which is usually the head, which gives you increased damage. I used to hate Deadshot, but I really liked it in Cold War. Death Perception, which allows you to see enemies through walls, basically. It allows you to see chests, resources, any items that are dropped easily. Not one of my favourite perks. I always found it took away from the immersiveness but it can be quite useful. Elemental pop, which means every bullet that you fire has a small chance of applying a random ammo mod effect. I loved this perk in the beginning of Cold War D Machine, but then as we went on, I found it became a little bit less useful, or maybe just not as exciting, because you could get these effects from the Pack-a-Punch anyway. Juggernaut, probably the best perk ever in Zombies still, it increases your maximum health. PhD Flopper, which lets you create an explosion every time that you dive to prone. The higher that you fall, the explosive damage is increased. It also gives you immunity to fall damage while diving, and immunity from area of effect damage from weapons that you're using. A really useful perk in Zombies, and quite fun as well. Quick Revive, which reduces health regeneration delay to 50% and reduces the time it takes to revive an ally by 50%. Speed Cola, which makes you reload and put on your armor faster. Stamina Up increases your run and sprint speed. And finally, Tombstone Soda. Whenever you die in game, upon your death you create a tombstone stash at the location that you downed in, which contains your backpack inventory in the next game. Actually, that sounds a lot better than what it used to be. I've always hated Tombstone, but if I'm reading this right, if you're playing a game of zombies and you die whilst you have Tombstone, you can then load into the next game, go to the location that you died at, and retrieve everything from your backpack in that previous game. That's actually a lot better than what it used to be, so maybe for the first time ever, Tombstone will actually be good. Ammo mods also return in zombies, but there are no new ones here. We have Brain Rot, Cryo Freeze, Dead Wire, Napalm Blast, and Shatter Blast. All ones that we've seen before. These are effects that you get with the Elemental Pop perk that I talked about earlier. Moving on to the Wonder Weapons, there are three that you can find in MW3 Zombies. I'd imagine they're going to add more later on, but for right now, there is the Ray Gun, the Scorcher, and the Wonder Waffer. Trox say, locate the necessary and devilishly difficult to find schematics, and you're able to craft some of the most arcane and powerful weapons ever. I'm guessing we're also going to be able to get them in the mystery box as well, unless you have to find the schematics first, craft them, and then then they're in the mystery box after. I wouldn't imagine so though. And as far as the wonder weapons go, the ray gun's always a standard. The wonder waffer we've seen before, and the new scorcher looks really good as well. Although, looking at it now, it's a shame that we don't have mule kick, which would let us get all three of these wonder weapons at once. Have Troyok done that intentionally? And then finally, Troyok just talk about a few gameplay things, a lot that we already know, such as us being able to use buy stations that will allow us to purchase things such as kill streaks, gas masks, any other essentials, wool buys, the mystery box. We know how all of this works. And that's pretty much everything that we need to know before Modern Warfare 3 Zombies releases in, from me recording this video, two days from now. Let me know in the comment section below, are you excited? Are there any things in here that you're worried about or you think sound really good? I'd be interested to see what you guys say in the comments. I will see you guys on the 10th when this game releases for some more zombies videos where we're going to be exploring MW3 zombies. Make sure you are subscribed to stay up to date with the latest videos on the channel. Thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next one. Until then, goodbye.